This video will delve into how to get pause implemented in your game, which is very, very simple. Uh, it'll also show you how to do a pause menu, which is very not simple. Uh, however, both of them are achievable if you uh, take the time and work through it. So as you can see here, when I hit escape, um, it pauses the game. Now, if it was just a pause menu, it might just say game paused, press space to resume or something like that. But, but if, if, sorry, if it was just a pause, but seeing as though it's a pause menu, I can actually select different things like add more circles um, or reset the game. Uh, so let's delve first into how you would do a simple pause uh, and you'll need this for the pause menu anyway. Uh, so the main idea is in the main function here, you have a variable um, called game paused, for example, and you can set it to false. Um, that doesn't have to be called game paused exactly, but that's, that's how I'm doing it. Um, and then based on here, uh, if, uh, well, first thing is in the update function, the main update function, you'd say if keyboard.press.escape, now press only picks up the initial press not being held, which is good. If keyboard.press.escape, then game paused equals not game paused. Uh, now that might look a little bit confusing, um, but it simply means if it's false, it will become true. If it's true, it will become false. In other words, it will toggle um, the game going, being paused on or off. And in fact, you can see over here, if I hit escape, 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 it's just toggling on and off the pause. Um, and then if the game is paused, update the pause menu, uh, else update the circles. So, or update the game, the rest of the game. So it's not actually running the game update uh, or the player update or the enemy update or anything if the game is paused. And that's how we're pausing the game. Essentially, we're not actually calling any of those functions to update it. Uh, the next thing to think about is draw. And of course we have draw the pause menu, uh, but only if the game is paused else draw the game. So hopefully uh, that's reasonably uh, simple. All of the other code we're going to want to put into a uh, file and I've called it pause underscore menu. Uh, we really, really want to keep all of the code together uh, because uh, that'll make it a lot easier to deal with. If it's mixed in with the other sections of the game, it won't be very good. Uh, we call this keeping the code modular. It means uh, keeping them in modules or well organized. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look at uh, what we're doing. Uh, this, by the way, uh, you won't have to do really any of this if you want a uh, just a paused game. All you'd need to do is when the game's paused, simply draw something on the screen that says uh, press escape to resume and you're done. However, if you uh, want to stick around and uh, charge into the fearsome battle that is the uh, uh, making a menu, then uh, stick with me here. Uh, I'm just going to explain a, a few things of how it works. And this really is quite difficult, but it is a lot, uh, a real rush when you get it working properly. Uh, so first of all, I'm knitting the pause menu. The menu itself is an object. Um, it has a cursor, uh, which is just uh, the position that is currently being highlighted. So over here, for example, if I hit escape, um, this is position zero, this is position one, and this is position two. Remember in programming, we often start from zero. So the cursor will start with it at zero. Um, if I uh, put it at one, it would uh, appear there, but I, I think starting at the top of the menu makes sense. The other thing we need is a list of items. I've called them items. Uh, you don't have to, but just be consistent. Uh, and I've got them here. So I've got resume, reset and add more circles. And you can see that um, over there. So that's how we're setting it up. Um, now, update the pause menu. Oh, what's the easiest way? Let's actually start with draw pause menu because it's a little bit less scary than update pause menu. Um, so basically uh, what, what I'm doing here because I'm still drawing the paused game behind, um, I've put like a, uh, a see-through uh, black shader over the top of it. And that's just the color 000 is black. Uh, but then the A 0 0.7 means it's only 0 0.7 um, dark or opaque. Uh, so the other 30% you can actually see through. Um, you have to use the RGB A. Uh, red, green, blue, alpha. Alpha is how 
uh, how opaque it is. So an alpha of one is fully there and alpha of zero is completely transparent. Um, you'll notice uh, that I have uh, made it the exact width of the screen, but you could just write 400 or 400 or something. It doesn't matter. As long as it's bigger than the screen, that will be fine. Um, and that's where we're going to, to put the uh, menu. Sorry, I just paused it for a minute because I realized for some reason I had X and Y here, but really all I want is that I want it to be at position zero and zero. Um, and uh, I think I just was getting tired and typed X and Y because that's what it says here. Um, but I, I needed that to be zero and zero. So I'm sorry if that, if that confused you there. Uh, now, the next thing uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the title text. So game paused, or but you could have the title of the game or whatever it is there. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to explain that. Um, now it comes for the interesting part. Um, I'm going to set uh, I is in programming. I is a letter that's often used for a counter um, that uh, as we go through, uh, it gets incremented from zero to one to two to three. So I'm going to use I to describe what menu item we're up to. Uh, and we're going to start with menu item zero. So you can think of I for item perhaps. Um, and then for each item in menu items, uh, if, if I is the same as menu dot cursor. So for example, so the, if the current item being drawn is, is the one that has the cursor on it, then uh, we're going to use this set alpha get flash value. Uh, so just a reminder, if you've done the uh, one of the other earlier ones of element game element videos that has a flash value, remember this is not built into Micro Studio, but every frame this uh, will give you a new number that goes from between 0 0.4 to 1 and it'll make it flash in and out. So we're setting the alpha, the, the alpha to that and then afterwards we'll need to set it back to 1. Uh, but we'll then draw the text item uh, and we'll draw it in the middle of the screen here and we'll also draw it at 25 which is here minus 25 times i so what that means is um, every item that we draw is going to be 25 pixels lower than the previous one uh, okay this is just the text size here which is a little bit bigger if it's if it is actually the menu uh, selected cursor uh, as well if, so if it's not the selected one, um, we're going to uh, set the alpha to 0 0.6 um, because we want to make to show that uh, it's actually that that item is not selected and make it a little bit uh, faded. Uh, then you'll notice we also draw it a little bit smaller, 20 out of 22. Uh, but we still draw it nonetheless, the same thing, 25 uh, is uh, the initial position of the first one and then minus 25 times i, so this is the, the second item down from the first one, uh, or from the zeroth one. So we're going to draw it actually 25, 25, 50 pixels down, okay? Then at the end, we just set the screen alpha back to one, and then we increment uh, i, which means to add one to it. So i becomes two, or so, it's, so the first time it'll be zero, then it becomes one, then it becomes two, etc. for however many items you have. So that's the drawing phase. Now the final phase um, is to, probably the most complicated one here is we're going to update the pause menu. Uh, so basically if we detect that enter has been pressed, uh, not held, so we need the press there if it's been pressed, uh, then I'm going to run a function called process menu request and I'm going to give it the name of the thing that was selected. So menu items menu cursor. So let's say the cursor is on zero, uh, it'll get the zeroth element of menu items, which will be resume, and it will hand it to this function process menu request. Um, so let's go down and see what my process menu request function is. Basically this implements the, the player's selection. Uh, so if request equals resume, then game paused equals false. Hopefully that makes sense. Else if request equals reset, then we're just going to run the init function again and start the whole game again. Else if request equals add more circles, then I've got a function called add circles, uh, unpause the game uh, and set the menu uh, cursor to zero. Uh, anyway, I hope, I hope that makes sense. But basically 
um, whenever you say what for each one of these you need to just specify what the what you want the game to actually do if uh, that got selected let's keep going on with the update menu function so maybe enter got pressed maybe it didn't but we're going to keep going um, if it didn't get pressed enter then let's look at whether down was pressed and if down was pressed then we simply want to increase uh, the cursor by one uh, and if up was pressed we want to decrease it by one um, however we also want this really nice thing where it wraps around so if we get to uh, the bottom and uh, go back up to the top um, then it'll so if we get to the bottom and press down it'll go back up to the top and the way that we do that um, is we simply say if menu.cursor is greater than menu.items.length and I just realized I made a mistake because length is just a property it's not a not a function uh, although it will still work as a function yay micro studio I'll just check that still works yep um, so if menu.cursor is greater than menu.items.length then we set it back to zero so here uh, it's on um, 0, 1, 2, uh, and then if it goes to uh, 3, um, it is greater or equal to the menu item's length, and it'll go back to 0. Um, otherwise, if we're pressing up, uh, if it's less than 0, then set it to menu.items.length minus 1. Um, why minus 1? Well, if you think about it, if there are three items in the list, then this is item zero, this is item one, this is item two. So if there are three items in the list, we wanna add it to three minus one equals two. Um, all of those things, again, I wouldn't worry about them too much. You just really get used to it the more you program all of those starting with zero uh, things. It gets a lot easier as you go. Uh, anyway, good luck with that. And uh, I look forward to seeing your amazing menu.